Kilroy back in the shop for a little shop ADHD. <clears throat> I get a lot of emails about what do I mean shop ADHD? Um, ADHD, as you know, means uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, uh, of one of which I am afflicted. And um, so it kind of just describes some days in the shop that you know what I'm talking about. Some days, you know, your stuff is everywhere, your brain is everywhere, you're just everywhere, and it's just, ah, you know, you know, and some days are like that. So these videos, these are kind of like um, Tom Lipton's extremely popular uh, meatloaf series. Um, the um, NYCNC's Wednesday Widgets. Uh, it's a little bit everything. What's going What's going on in the shop? What am I up to? Letting you know what's going on with the projects that you've been following. Uh, first things first, thank you to all of my subscribers. Thank you to all of my commenters. Thank you to all my buds out there. Um, keeping it real in the community here. Uh, so what's going on this week? Um, Got an update on the uh, power feed project. Used the power feed this week a couple of times in projects that I would consider not video worthy, uh, i.e., boring. And uh, but the power feed works fantastic. <laughs> and I've got a couple little clips to show you of some um, of the power feed in use, and and you know nothing exciting, but just to show you that it works. <laughs> So yeah, the power feed's fantastic. There's only one, one issue I've, I've uh, discovered with it on my 3D printing side. The cone that I printed to cover the gear, the, the I guess, dial replacement, um, it is held in place by what used to be the dial lock, right? Uh, so you could set your dial and lock it down. Well. The way I designed my cone is a little bit different than the way the dial was designed. There's no shoulder in there for that cone to, to lock against. So if you don't pay attention or if you run it, if you um, wrap it, it from left to right, um, the, the, the dial lock will tighten itself down and, and all of a sudden you'll, you'll hear this thing kind of load down and slow down. Uh, but it won't stop. I can tell you right now, uh, the thing has plenty of power. Uh, and the 3D printed adapter um, seems to have plenty of robustness to handle um, any uh, type of cut that I might apply to it in that machine. Um, I learned this from when I rapided the table along and I had the x-axis locked. Yeah, that was nice. But it worked. So there we go. Um, anyway. Um, that's the update on the on the power feed. Uh, got some viewer mail. Let me get that. All right, viewer mail time. Um, check it out. Yes, indeedy. We got a letter from Tom Lifton, Ox Tool Co. Uh, the man with the tool logo. And uh, let's check it out. And um, oh, Tom. My brother <laughs> I appreciate it thank you very much that's very nice oh and some ox tool stickers I've got an ox tool um, lapel pin or pin that goes on my uh, that's on my apron that I have worn proudly and uh, I will be right back with you Tom with some uh, Kilroy stickers. There you go. Um, I need some some assistance. I, I need to rearrange my 
uh, where I'm videoing. I, I don't have a, a backdrop per se. I mean, this has been on my backdrop. Beautiful, the rare, the lovely Revet 1020F. I mean, it makes a pretty nice backdrop, plus the nice, uh, the round windows and the brickwork, and it's, it's, it's certainly got a masculine feel to it. If I could add a couple of firearms, maybe a cigar, beer, and a stripper, we'd be just in man paradise here, right? So, but, uh, you know, I, I don't have a backdrop where I can uh, display on video the stickers from I also got a, um, a, a sticker from uh, I also got a sticker from Keith Rucker um, and uh, his channel and I, I need a place to pr to put this stuff up to so that it's visible in my backdrop um, uh, while I'm doing these types of videos so if you guys got any ideas uh, let me know uh, so thank you very much Tom, Tom sent me a little a James there, a little label and, and some stickers. So we will use these. Uh, we will use some color, no doubt. Always a man of class. Um, got some new tooling acquisitions. So let's move the camera in and check those out. All right, we got some new tooling here. Um, first thing up. An old and uh, somewhat shelf-worn Starrett V-Block uh, set number 268C. Um, and here they are. And yes, there's definitely some corrosion going on here. So we're going to have to clean these up. Um, that's pretty bad right there. Um, that's pretty bad. Uh, but we are going to do the, um, Evapo Rust treatment and maybe some light, light stoning, uh, in order to clean these up and, uh, hopefully get these back in fighting shape. Uh, the clamps, um, which are in the same box are in, in perfect shape. Um, no corrosion, uh, just in fantastic shape. So these clamps work this way. Um, and they have, uh, uh, depending on how you use them, they have uh, bigger, different V sizes uh, around here. But like I said, these, these definitely need some cleaning up. And... Um, see here they've got some corrosion on them there so we will have to see what we can do with that next um, another stared acquisition in much better shape uh, but from a similar age um, the Starrett uh, 129 bench block. Uh, this one's in real good shape. Uh, no corrosion on it. Uh, the 129 is uh, basically 2 and 15 sixteenths, 3, three inch OD to the knurling here, right? So, uh, and this one's in real good shape. Um, and uh, no issues there handy little piece of uh, uh, tooling to work with around the bench. So uh, I oiled it down a little bit, a little LPS2 to uh, just clean it up. But anyway, this is also a, I, um, I stare at red box, the old dark red box. And um, anyway, glad to add these two items to the, uh, to the tooling collection. I don't have a lot of stare at items. And um, it's always a pleasure to work with uh, quality tooling. Okay, so what else has been going around the shop? Been doing a lot of cleaning this week. Or 
rearranging, reorganizing in the shop, trying to uh, better organize my storage, better organize my space uh, to make this a better workspace, more productive workspace. So I'm going to show you some areas of the shop that you don't normally see. And, you know, might not be all that exciting, but uh, I'm going to take the camera down and we're going to walk you around and show you some of the major rearranging changes we've made. And um, we'll go from there. All right, this is over by my desk. The shaper is over here to my um, immediately to the right of this toolbox. Uh, this is my three-phase power here and the steps up to my desk. Uh, what used to be in this location was a big gray stand-up cabinet here and another big gray stand-up cabinet about right here where this was. So I took everything that was in this corner, unloaded the cabinets, unpackaged everything, and moved them. And now I'm going to take you to where I moved them. Okay, here's an entrance to my storage or storage room in the shop here. My little Kilroy was here there. I've got my uh, wire rack and a bunch of pallet racking over here to the left. And then when you come in here, I moved my two rather large storage units uh, in here. And uh, there's a work sink in here doing some... I'm going to be putting some new cabinets up in here. The alarm is in here. Um, and then I've rearranged, reorganized um, most of my chemical storage now into this cabinet here and uh, some more in this cabinet. But as far as cutting oils, uh, coolants, uh, chemicals, solvents, cleaning chemicals, you name it. Um, I've moved everything up in here to try to get some more room out of the shop. There's the uh, coming out here. You see my bandsaw, my vertical bandsaw, my horizontal bandsaw, my uh, chop saws. I've got an abrasive chop saw, a uh, dry saw, and a little. Uh, a tiny little Royobi drill press that I use for a surprising amount of work and come over here this um, also used to be a storage area right here a storage compartment right here got rid of it and uh, a lot of the stuff that came out of those cabinets tooling items went into here so I've got you know, all sorts of uh, tooling items and stuff stashed in here now. Uh, just, just trying to get better organized um, and be able to find my stuff a little better and get my work done faster. And here's the side effects of cleaning. Uh, you start rearranging and cleaning and boy what a mess. Alright, so See what's going on in the shop, a little bit of clean in, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, it's never ending, you know, stuff coming in and out. You probably see all these boxes over here over my shoulder. Work coming in, work going out. So, um, you know, you got to have room for all that. Um, I did another little, uh, right down here, I did another little job organizing my uh, shop rolls. You know, everybody gets these... Um, uh, abrasive rolls, um, uh, abrasive paper like the Norton shop rolls, and they kind of become accumulated on you. You want them close by, uh, but not in the way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sh grab the camera and show you what I did to keep this stuff handy and uh, nearby the workbench. Alrighty, so um, what you see here is um, got this wooden box um, that I had actually built for something else. See, it's attached to the underside of the workbench there. I had built that for something else ages ago. I was no longer using it for that. And it turns out the height was just right and the depth was just right to put the shop rolls in here. 
and then written on each one is the um, uh, grit uh, going from coarsest to finest. This is 100 grit, uh, 150, 150, uh, 220, 280, and 320. And uh, so this, this puts all the rolls very easy to get to and, um, you know, very closely um, uh, located to the uh, small lathe, to the rivet, and to the workbench. So it's another little um, project. Let me see if I can get you a better shot of that. See, it's just screwed up through here. These, these workbenches are made out of um, old solid core doors with the uh, 11 gauge steel top on. So there you go. That's another little uh, cleanup project here. All right. Last but not least, I mounted up. I mounted up my eight-inch vise on the swivel base over on the Kearney Trekker. Uh, that is somewhat of a trick to do by yourself. Uh, I'll share a couple of picks. I also made a couple of new keys for the swivel base, so I'll share a couple of picks of that for you to enjoy. Uh, so that's uh, what's going on in the shop. Uh, a lot of cleaning, a lot of reorganizing a lot of efficiency work. I do have some new projects coming up. Let me get some stuff to show you. So I got a couple of big faceplate castings, or fairly big, and um, give you a little scale here. Uh, the base and the main web, these are an inch thick. Got a single web here in the back. Overall dimensions are, this one's eight inches long and five inches tall. And total base seven and an eighth inches. You see it's T-shaped. I don't know if I'm going to keep this piece right here. Or just or lose this piece right here and turn this into a conventional angle um, angle plate. It's something that I'm thinking about right now. Uh, here's a there's a smaller one here that uh, is the same in all respects except for the length. It's a little over six inches long, so I could finish this one up here. Probably get a finish length of eight and a finish length of six. So we're going to be doing some machining on these here real soon. Uh, any comments or questions on whether or not to um, keep this T-shaped web, let me know. It certainly will complicate machining a little bit because I'll have to machine this surface. I'll have to cut a relief groove in here and then I'll have to machine this surface. And then same with the tops and the sides and the bottom. So uh, it does complicate the machining process a bit, but um, possibly could be useful. So this is a project that's coming up. So that's a project that's coming up. Got a couple other projects that I'm gonna kind of keep under wraps until I'm ready to share those with the, the crowd. Stay safe in the shop and be back with you soon.